we're going to look how to build an IOMD ROM for the RISC PC or A7000. So the first thing we need to do is download the source code. These are available as tarballs, which are a compressed archive uh, available from the RISC-OS Open website. While that's downloading, the other thing we should do is open up the DDE and make sure that we've run the set paths application so that various system variables have been set up. Next, we can drag the archive to the untar bz2 application. If you don't have the untar bz2 application, it's on the miscellaneous downloads page. Type in a destination path, and you can cheat by just dragging the archive in twice and deleting the end bit off it. I'm going to extract it to a directory called IOMD and run the tool. The first thing it does is decompress it, so that's the BZ2, which is BZIP2. Now that's decompressed, it will start to untar it. There's about eight to 10,000 files uh, in the source tree, so while it's doing that, it will create the source directory here. Once extracted, it's going to run a script and the script is just going to copy the various tools inside the source tree. So rather than running them from the DDE, it will run them from the source tree. And then we want to run the application called the builder and the builder is just a front end to the build process. Drag the RISC-OS directory into uh, register it with builder, add that. Now we'll see in builder's menu that we can pick the environment for the build that we're going to do, which is for IOMD32. There's various options here. The first couple called clean are only needed if you're wiping away uh, a previous build. And in general, you'll want the six sequential um, ones that I've ticked and run the build. So during this first phase what it's doing is exporting all of the header files for all of the components into a directory called export. So we just pause for a second. So export phase equals headers. The export libraries phase will take a bit longer because it's also having to assemble and compile libraries that are shared between multiple components in the ROM. If we just pause for a second, we'll see that it's exporting phase equals libraries. And the last of the exports phases exports the resources. These are things like the sprites files, messages files, templates files that end up in resourcefs. Each component gets the opportunity to copy these over ready for installation. You can tell once this is nearly complete because uh, it will suddenly slow down and start to do a load of tokenization and substitution. So this is compressing where it can uh, messages files for common strings that are used an awful lot. That just saves a bit of space uh, in the ROM. Now 
Now we're on to the real business, which is the make ROM phase. This assembles all the assembler components and compiles all the C components. A typical ROM has around 120 components in it. That's a mixture of applications, the desktop, the window manager, filing systems, hardware support drivers, the kernel, networking, BBC Basic, and of course the toolbox modules. During the install ROM phase, assembler components are copied over ready for joining and C components are linked against the stubs. And the final step is to join all of the pieces together into a ROM image. And there we go. So it's now complete and it's output a file called AUVI00. Each successive ROM will then increment that, so you would end up with BUVI00, CUV, and so on. So the first one we've produced is AUVI00, and that's suitable for running in an emulator or soft loading onto a RISC PC hardware. And the logs are also available for previous builds if you need to see what happened. Once you've successfully completed a build, generally, unless you're modifying the headers, libraries or resources, you can untick those and skip them and just do make, install, join. Next, what you want to do is confirm the ROM you've built is actually going to work. So over in RPCMU, go to the ROMs directory, move aside any ROM that you already have there and drop in the one that you just created. And go upper directory and double click to run the recompiler version of RPCMU. This will then start the emulator which loads the ROM, it takes a couple of seconds. Of course you can also load the ROM using the soft load tool on a real RISC PC but here for convenience we're just using an emulator. Down to task manager and there we go, confirmation that was the ROM that we just built.